And here is the man who has excited British rugby crowds through this tour so far. Ian Kirkpatrick, the all-black skipper, leads on this powerful and talented side. There's Peter Whiting. Little Joe Caram, number 15, the man who's come good in this tour so far. And just listen to the roar from this crowd as the red jersey appears. Remember, the captain of Wales is one of the most popular Welsh players of all time, Delmi Thomas of Flanethley, one of the five Flanethley men in this Welsh team. This great lock forward, veteran of three Lions tours, who's played as a prop forward and as a lock for the Lions. And just to remind ourselves once more about the teams in today's match. The Welsh side there with just the one new cap in Glynshaw of Neath, the loose head, prop forward. And an all-black side that has three men new to test matches. Joe Caram, the fullback. Grant Batty on the left wing, number 11. And Big Hamish MacDonald from Oxford in Canterbury at lock forward. And it's going to be Wales to kick off through Phil Bennett. And Phil Bennett starts the match for Wales. And Peter Whiting, very cleverly there, judging the distance of that ball, ducking his head, letting it go directly into touch because he knew that by so doing, he would get a scrummage for New Zealand at the middle. That's Phil Bennett. And here is one of the key situations to today's match, the scrummage going, getting a beautiful heel first time. John Williams inside his own 25. And that's the kind of thing John Williams does to uh, really encourage his team. His first pick up a good one, his first kick absolutely dead into touch. Pushing his forwards up to there, midway between their own 25 and halfway. The first throw in by Brian Williams. Peter Whiting and Delmi Thomas missed it. That was Alex Wiley dribbling through. The pick up by Gareth Edwards. This is John Taylor trying to feed Roy Bergier. Bergier held by number five, Peter Whiting. This is the young fellow who scored a wonderful try against Scotland last season, taking over in the Welsh side from John Dawes. A vast difference in weight here. A stone and a half per man. And that's a great channel. And there's a penalty against, I think, Dave Morris on the far side of the scrummage. Breaking, not going behind the rear foot. Joe Caram then, one of the two Wellington representatives in this all-black side. Caram, straight and through. First blood to New Zealand. Three points to nil, they lead. Two and a half minutes of the match gone. Brian Williams throws. Delmi Thomas palms, fed by Quinnell. This is out to Bennett. Bennett hoisting one into the space. Back goes Grant Batty, almost up to his 25. This is Batty. That's also into space, but John Williams has filled it. Batty, a, quite a good tackle, tackle. Williams out to Bennett. He's knocked over by Alex Wiley. This is Karam, the All Blacks fullback. Going asks for the switch. That's a big one. They're going to have to play it. This is John Williams with Phil Bennett supporting. John Williams, the man who made such a great name for himself in New Zealand and Australia with the British Lions. That's the Welsh 25. Peter Whiting pushing through the line-out, but the referee deciding that the throw-in wasn't straight. And already a little bit of uh, trouble and uh, referee Johnny Johnston, who's uh, had charge of three and a half internationals, he once uh, substituted as a referee in a, an England match at Twickenham but a couple of years ago and uh, he also works in Scotland Yard so those fellas had better watch themselves out there two old adversaries there at scrum half Gareth Edwards and Sid Going I make it this is the 10th 
challenge against each other. The put in, I think, not straight. And here's another great chance for Joe Carrum. We think perhaps the referee may have penalised Jeff Young for foot up there. But in any case, it's another penalty to New Zealand in very kickable position. The ball, of course, will be very slippery. And another problem with kick for kickers on a ground like this is the placement of the foot and the possibility of foot movement as the foot slips away. But no great breeze to worry them. Notice Joe Caram with this old-fashioned style of placing the ball straight up and down, walking straight back and running straight on to kick with the toe. Caram then. That was absolutely dead straight. He gets a little pat on the back from his captain, Ian Kirkpatrick. And that's the state of the game with nine minutes of the first half over. And that's the Welsh 25. On Wales' throw, Keith Murdoch this time at the front of the line-out for New Zealand. Tani Norton, the hooker, going into the five yards area. That's Edwards, back to Bennett. Charged down by Hamish MacDonald. Wiley knocks it back. It's taken by Matheson. They're inside the Welsh 25. Going to Burgess. The chip through, meant for Hales. It's John Bevan clearing. John Bevan there, who scored the record number of tries to equal Tony O'Reilly's record in New Zealand with the Lions. Beautiful bit of defensive work, really under pressure. And that's how good the kick was. Almost up to the Welsh 10 yards line. Notice how Jeff Young has moved out of the line out. Going to Burgess. Chip back for the forwards. Bevan again, dropping back in cover. John Bevan again, doing some excellent covering and clearing for Wales. Another good catch by Peter Whiting. Going hoists one. Bevan again waits, going has him, John Williams had to go in, the whole Welsh, ba New Zealand backer there and it could be a try for Keith Murdoch. The New Zealand forwards moved up there like a great black blanket. It was the hoisted kick by Sid Going that did it. John Williams a little late getting in and look at all those New Zealand forwards. And this massive 17 and a half stone prop forward Murdoch gets the try. John Bevan checking with Gareth Edwards where he's to put the ball. Hamish McDonald trying to lean over. Delmi Thomas feeds Edwards to Bennett. This is Jim Shanklin. Almost up to the 25. And it's a penalty against New Zealand. I think for handling in that ruck situation. Of course, it's a tremendous burden for Phil Bennett to take over the goal kicking from Barry John, who uh, put over so many vital and valuable goals for Wales, 90 points he scored in internationals for Wales. And here's Phil Bennett with the penalty attempt. Well, Nothing could do Phil Bennett more good, I think, than getting that penalty over. It cuts the deficit to 10 points to three. About 18 minutes to go to halftime. Keith Murdoch with the moustache. Behind him, Hamish MacDonald. And opposite him, Derek Quinnell with a fair hair. Llewellyn in front and then Jeff Young. Whiting Palms, taken by MacDonald. In goes Sutherland. Here's this New Zealand drive. That was beautifully put out. This is Burgess. He perhaps shouldn't have kicked because Batty was in the line as an extra man, but it's still a useful kick. Great catch by John Williams, inside his own 25. Going, Burgess.
Well, the crowd, of course, are taking a dim view of uh, the All Blacks rucking. But, of course, it looks uh, an awful lot worse sometimes than it really is. And a great many players accept the fact that if you go down there, you're liable to be uh, trampled on and perhaps rucked out with the ball. The penalty against Wales for foot up, I think. My goodness, this could be a really crucial kick for New Zealand. So it's up to Joe Caram here, who's had uh, a very good tour so far, tremendously successful. Caram then. It was a bit stabbed, but it got between the posts and it was high enough. So Karam kicks his third penalty goal of the match and New Zealand go ahead by 13 points to three. And they've stretched their line out a bit. They're leaving themselves a bit of room for manoeuvre here for perhaps the catch and the drive. It was meant for Whiting. Wiley couldn't quite control it. Dave Morris feeds Phil Bennett. Another relieving kick from the little Flanethley standoff half. Pushes his forwards up to there, their own 25. We're into extra time at the interval. All Blacks leading 13 points to three. Williams throws, taken by Delmi Thomas. I don't think the throw-in was straight, and I, I think that Wales probably have opted for the line-out instead of the scrummage. John Bevan throws, knocked back by Peter Whiting. This is Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick gives it to Sutherland. Now it's back to going. Burgess. It's going to bounce in front of the Welsh posts. John Williams seemed to be partly obstructed. That was Shanklin in there for Wales. Number one, Glyn Shaw, trying to help to take it clear. The referee's whistle goes for half-time. And New Zealand are leading by 13 points to three, having had the satisfaction of scoring the one try by Keith Murdoch and three penalty goals by Joe Caram. Wales then with the score at 13-3 to New Zealand and three minutes of the second half gone. Wales badly need a quick encouragement of uh, another score just to get them back into this game. That was a good drive by the Welshman. It's John Taylor heaving Jeff Matheson. And Alex Wiley too was, uh, was in that. Alex Wiley coming back to the back of the line out here. Number six, captain of Canterbury. Pretty fiery character in his day, but... Uh, they tell me a lot quieter since he took over the leadership of his uh, provincial side. Edwards, a huge pass to Bennett. There's the little twinkling sidestep, giving himself room. Phil Bennett, one of those lovely sidesteppers off either foot. On their own throw with Wiley number six at the tail. Going, took it well. Referee not satisfied that the ball was straight. And with Sussman Vach, the 52,000 crowd, trying to produce that little bit of extra encouragement. But there, Connie Norton has taken one against the head. That's going, held by Edward. Bennett kicks through. Bennett, nicely out to John Bevan. Bevan over the 25. Can he make the line? What a run. And it's a try for Bevan. A great try by John Bevan, and it started with this little delay from Sid going. Phil Bennett kicked through, but it was the pass that did it. Now, Bevan had to go 35 to 40 yards, and that was Duncan Hale's number 13. John Bevan scoring in the same place where he got a lovely try against France last March. John Williams on his own 10 yards line. 
That's a handy one. Karam waits. And again, Karam had called for the mark. And that's uh, the New Zealanders, very much under pressure, but certainly keeping their heads there. Karam going deep into his own 25 to take this free kick. Mervyn Davis and Barry Flewellen charging. This national stadium absolutely seething with excitement now. They're 10 yards outside the New Zealand 25. 13 points to 7 New Zealand lead. 8 minutes of the second half gone. Quinnell palms. Edwards feeds. But there's a penalty against the All Blacks, I think, for a bit of obstruction at the line-out. And Phil Bennett comes up to try the pot at goal. Phil Bennett with a kick of some 35-40 yards. Bennett. Well, it was a bit tired, but it got there. And there's only three points in it now. 13 points to 10 New Zealand lead. Standing in the five yards area for New Zealand. Rangi Tani, Will Norton, I can tell you. One of the four Canterbury men in this all-black side. Peter Whiting, Palms, it's here. Patrick who feeds going. This is Burgess. It's quite a good one. Taken there by Quinnell. Penalty against New Zealand. But Barry Flewellen actually made the, got the ball in the end there. But it's a penalty to New Zealand. And this really is a crucial kick for Joe Karam. 13 points to 10, New Zealand lead. 15 minutes of the second half over. New Zealand very much under pressure during most of this second half. This kick could restore their confidence, restore their poise. It's fully 45 yards, including the angle. Joe Karam then. It's a good one. 12 points to his credit, Joe Karam, in this match. And New Zealand go ahead by 16 points to 10. Peter Whiting is still at number five. Hamish McDonald guarding the front along with Murdoch number three. They're feeding out to Shanklin, to Bergier, John William, John Bevan again. Bevan, Wiley makes the catch and the mark. But it's, uh, it could be a penalty to Wales for obstruction. Obstruction of John Bevan. The penalty, a double penalty, can be awarded where the infringement took place or where the ball alighted or would have alighted. They've taken it where Alec Wiley made the catch. But uh, Phil Bennett has gone back to give himself this angle. It's good. Sixteen points to thirteen. It's batty to throw in on the Welsh ten yards line. Referee Johnny Johnson, I think, deciding again that uh, it wasn't straight. And the Welsh have taken the scrummage. As well they might in this half because their uh, the scrummaging has got new fire and uh, new drive about it. This is the big man Keith Murdoch on this side of the front row for New Zealand. Backing against Glyn Shaw, the uh, new Welsh cap from Neath. Welsh hooker maybe too quick or maybe getting down too low it's a kick of about 45 yards 
Can Joe Karam make it a fifth penalty goal? It's far enough, and it's high enough. Nineteen points to thirteen, New Zealand lead. Seventeen minutes of the match to go. Going weights, and you can see the trouble there is for New Zealand. A pick up by Melvin Davis, John Taylor. Now it comes to Bennett, to Bergier, to Shanklin. Batty seemed to play Gerald Davis, the referee playing advantage. Batty did well to recover. They're 10 to 12 yards inside the New Zealand 25. Grant Batty to throw then. Just about 15, 20 yards short of the New Zealand line. Edwards to Bennett. Phil Bennett. Batty calls for it. There's a chance there for Melvin Davis. The drive there by Delmi Thomas. This could be a drive for Wales. Did his momentum take him over? Yes, it did. And the scorer, believe it or not, is fullback John Williams. But it's been disallowed because it wasn't a momentum try. The referee has decided that he was tackled and played the ball after the tackle. Just watch it. It was Delmi who took it to the line. And then John Williams who was in there. Now there'll be a lot of talk about that one. But the referee was close to it. The pick up by Mervyn Davis to Gareth Edwards. This is Parkinson clearing. It could still be dangerous because Gerald Davis is back there. Now John Williams is inside him on halfway. There's the Davis sidestep. A tackle went in after the kick. And again, it'll be a penalty to Wales for obstruction. The double penalty again, where the ball alighted, are at the place of infringement. I think this time that Delmi Thomas is going to ask Phil Bennett to have a kick at goal. And uh, it says in the laws, of course, that if he nominates to, pick it, to kick at goal, then he can't really, can't change his mind. Phil Bennett then. It's a good one. Two minutes of actual playing time remain, plus injury time. We've played two and a half minutes of injury time. New Zealand ahead by three points, 19 points to 16. The great roar for the shove, going to Burgess. Burgess has hoisted it high to Gerald Davis. On the New Zealand 10 yards line, out to John Williams. Williams obstructed again. Decision there was late obstruction. And it's a penalty to Wales. And what a decision now for Delmi Thomas. Should he go for the penalty goal to tie the score? Or should he go for a try to win the match? He's made his decision to ask Phil Bennett to kick a penalty goal. Phil Bennett with four penalty goals to his credit in the match so far. 1916. What a moment for this little Tlenethi standoff. Bennett straight, but just not straight enough. The referee's whistle has gone. The match is over. And New Zealand have won by 19 points to 16. One of the most exciting and thralling internationals, I think, this national stadium crowd has ever seen. A game in which we've had no fewer than nine penalty goals, but two very good tries. A game that the All Blacks, in the end, were relieved to win. A game in which the Welsh almost pulled it off with another tremendous fight back after playing second fiddle for most of the first half.